In this episode of Relax and Take Notes, Love Dorsey takes the mic and speaks on how feelings and emotions are affecting our culture. But first, a word from our sponsor. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Are you or anyone you know suffering with high blood pressure, diabetes, or cholesterol? Well, the solution is here, and it's Olive Leaf Extract. Olive Leaf Extract all-natural formula helps lower diabetic blood sugar, lower blood pressure, as well as cholesterol. And did I mention it's also good for candida and eczema? For more information, go to shopmyoliveleaf.com. What's good, Relax and Take Notes family? DJ Jordan, I'm back with Love Dorsey. I'm here. And we want to know what's on Love Dorsey's mind today. Man, I you know what? I um for one, I'm glad to be back. I, it's always refreshing to have these conversations. It's like a different room yes. <laughs> from what I'm normally in trying to drag people into my frame of mind about our culture. Right. 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 Um but I've been on this hardcore mission to really, you know, program and condition into anybody that will listen to be more solution based mm -hmm. and out of your feelings. Right. Like I think right. we are um in an epidemic where feelings are taking priority over everything. Over everything. From bills to family structure to even people with their personal goals. It ain't even just mm -hmm. about relationships. Watching stuff that's going on with politics and deciding who you're going to place your vote with, deciding if that stuff matters for you. Mm -hmm. It's so many emotional-based decisions that are being made, and it, make, it, it puts me in a space where um, I worry for especially my people because— we're being marketed to um, nonstop daily. Nonstop. Whether yeah. you're driving around, whether you're on the internet, whether you, I mean ads and commercials and the concept of branding, whatever you're selling mm -hmm. with a logo on something to spark the thought in somebody's mind to buy is everywhere, right? Yeah. And we're so in our feelings that we don't realize, you know, there is a thing called emotional marketing. Yeah. There are ads Absolutely. and commercials that the people on the marketing team designed it to appeal to your com your emotions. Yeah. Yeah, Even absolutely. down to selling uh, pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. They play a commercial, set the structure up on the commercial a certain way, and it will be make yeah. you feel like, based on you relating, it appealed to you emotionally to buy that particular medication that you don't even need. Yeah. It's dangerous Very is dangerous. what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. We're in a time where being unaware of my feelings, being separate from reality and, you know, conscious decisions for bills and business and family and shit like that is... It's necessary. Yeah, it, it is. And, and as I listen to you, it puts me in the mind of, of what I studied years ago called fear-based marketing. Come on. You know, and it's the very reason why when you look at the news, everything is rooted around fear. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. so if there's an incident that happens and they're interviewing a person, they always, that person is required unknowingly yep. to promote some level of fear. They were yep. afraid uh, a, a mass shooting, whatever the case is, car accident. I was in fear for my life. Yep. This was, you know, and so they know that marketing the fear creates just like a, a lot of other things, yeah. almost like a pleasure, a pleasure <laughs> because does. you get so familiar yes. with the fear. It becomes it ain't even fear no more. It's just like it's a pleasurable experience. Yep. So it, it, it becomes the very reason why people watch horror movies yes. in order to go to sleep. Yes, but we, we've we gotten to a point where we're no longer separating. Like, you, you see the old school setups or old school movies. They got the big back television set. Mm -hmm. And the people were consciously aware, I am watching a film. Right. This yeah. is a horror film. This exactly. is a drama film. This is an action movie with Clint Eastwood mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. I'm aware that this is outside of my regular shit right. I must exactly. handle. Mm -hmm. It's become blurred. Oh, it's totally blurred. It's yeah. blurred to the point where we are so in the hormones that are secreted and released within us the when dopamine. we're watching a movie yeah. that when that shit goes on with real life stuff. We don't even see it. It's real life. Or if we do, we don't respond to it as, as if, if it's, it's real, real life. life. We respond to it like it's a, a video game yep. or some shit that we just watching on TV. Yes. Even a full-blown shootout in your community, yes. you talk about it as if it was entertainment. Yes. 
not even processing the fact that somebody actually just lost their life. Yep. You know what I mean? Or it could be a tragic car accident where they, they even they ain't even took the body out of the car yet, and you're and you're driving by with your cell phone yep. filming Detached. it. Detached. You, you see what I'm saying? You're you're filming the tragedy yep. because. In your mind, that's the thing to do. Yeah. So if you notice what you're saying, at the times that it is appropriate for you to be human and empathetic and process and, process and feel, mm -hmm. we don't. We, we don't. record and everybody look at this. She dead. His body. Yeah. And then yeah. at the times where it requires you to not be in your feelings and get in your fucking logic and right. statistics and reason and, mm -hmm. reason and understand and move and on think. things, mm -hmm. we talking about some feelings. Yeah. Yeah. We we mixed up. Yeah. You know, I, I describe it as this this tangled ball of pathology you know what i mean that becomes damn near impossible for us to come out of yeah. because the pathology has been there for so long and pathology for y'all who may not know that's just another word for dysfunction yep. right it's been there for so long it's it's not even seen as yes. pathology or dysfunction it's yeah, been it's normalized normal. it's just our regular way of life it's normal and so much of you know and we've talked about this before the black lived experience has been one of 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 a particular type of relationship with america that's what we've become used to we've become used to being abused yeah. because historically that's the space that we've always operated in yep yep and, and it it has become a generational curse as well because as you try to confront the things in your life that you want to change yeah. move forward break generational curses create new habits you'll have the people that raised you are elders. You're making them uncomfortable with your growth. Right. They'll start telling you, you know, Jesus don't like that, or you're going to go to hell if you do that. <laughs> right. or, no, yeah. I wouldn't put my money in there, and, you right. know, this going to go on, and, mm -hmm. oh, that sounds like a scam. And, right. And they've been nowhere, built nothing, nah, accomplished they, they ain't nothing. Took no chances. <laughs> None. Nah, they, they, yeah, they've, um, they've given up, for lack of a better way. And they've given up, and not, and they're not even conscious of the fact or aware of the fact that they've given Give it up. up. It's just they live their day-to-day -day life based yeah. on a pathology mm -hmm. that's fear-based. That's fear-based. It's like their, their functions, the way that they move, how they think. If you bring them a new piece of information, they're programmed to go straight to it's probably not true or yeah, it won't to work. It. It, even, even so far as when we have these conversations you know, in podcasts, people, you know, particularly black people, or designed, uh, we've been unfortunately hardwired a condition yeah, to do these things to dis to discredit. Credit, yep, come on. To disrespect. Yep. And dismiss. Yes. And ultimately destroy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The message or the messenger. And it don't matter own... if what you're saying is 1,000% yeah. factually correct. Yeah. Oh, I don't like what she's wearing. Yep. Discredit. Yes. Dismiss. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, who she thinks she is? A... Discredit. Yep. Dismiss. For the purpose of destroying. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And so when you when you know that about us, then I always say you have to love us beyond our trauma. Yes. You you and you get to a point where you go into a state of apathy while still trying to, you know, yeah. save and do what you can. Absolutely. Because for me, and you describe it so like accurate. I, I look at the people because it happens to me on my platform. I say something that's so true and so generationally curse breaking. Like it's so, oh my gee, she yeah. said that, and and, it's and we don't want shifting. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. In that moment, it does. It'll shift a paradigm or make you start looking at shit different, and then you will see them. Oh, I don't like how her voice sound. I don't like what she wearing. Uh, why is she in the car? Right. Or just <laughs> random shit, and it shows you where a person's mind is at. Right. Like I'm giving you thought provoking, factual information and you're like, oh, what kind of car is that? Right. I bet it ain't no foreign car. Let, huh? let me let me let me let me share this because your lives are legendary. Right. <laughs> if if you under, really understand Love Dorsey, then you should understand why she would be in the car, because when something comes on her, that shit got to come out. She ain't got time or she. First of all, she don't even live where this podcast takes place. <laughs> so she ain't got time to be waiting until to, she get yep. here to chop it up and, and share with y'all on this platform. The best place for her to be is her car. That way she ain't having to sleep on 
what she knows she needs to share with y'all in it, that moment. It's funny. You see what I'm saying? Yes, you were 100% correct. And it turned into a niche. Like, it started out just as that. Like, when it, most of the time when you're driving and you're thinking, and you're like, you know what? People need to know this. You right go live, boom. There. Mm -hmm. After doing it so much, people started referencing. That's the girl that be in the car talking that right. shit. So now it's like, it becomes, now it if I ain't in the car, right. I'm Some... going to get in the car <laughs> to go say whatever. I could right. be in a building somewhere. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not here, I'm going to get in the car That's and let y'all know what's going on. Absolutely. It is the niche Absolutely. of that particular, you know, brand of mine. But it's for me, it's 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 a feeling of sorrow that comes over me when I see our people like we do exactly those things that mm -hmm. you describe. And it's such a deflection from the reality of what we need to focus on. And it's 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 yeah. literally you being triggered or a paradigm being pushed to shift, right? And in yeah. that moment you're rejecting that. Yeah. Absolutely. You're rejecting the growth. Growth re is uncomfortable. There is never any of this shit mm -hmm. that I learned, right, that y'all hear me putting out that was an easy, smooth, like, oh, here's that information. It was very difficult right. to receive and process and it in when mm -hmm. I was in my bullshit. Right. Now, now it has become way easier because right. I'm on this. Yeah, you, but when you I wasn't on this, this yeah, I was just muscle. as mm -hmm. uncomfortable as yeah. anybody else. But I had a respect for the concept mm -hmm. that in order to be different than what you are now, in order to grow, you have to get uncomfortable. Got to get uncomfortable. And you, 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 you fell in love with the process of self-development. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Which is essential to even being successful. Yes. You know what I mean? And so even doing that, you always have to understand that you're not yet complete. Yes. You're not, you haven't yet arrived. Yes. There's still work to do. You're yes. still in process. Yes. When you know I, what I mean? When I, so, you know, I'm an autodidact, right? This is somebody that is mm -hmm. self-taught, right? right? And so for me, I developed this space for myself, this lifestyle for myself, because, you know, I remember growing up and, you know, I'm, I'm educated. I'm college educated. I know a lot. I will, I'm versed because I've spent time in the streets right. so I can, kick it to you out of the college books so I can kick it to you street style, street. however yeah. you want mm -hmm. it, right? And I come from a lot of the trauma that I yeah. talk about with a real our community. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when I'm when I'm speaking on this stuff, right, it's a it's a space of knowing, but it is also I was raised on a principle of they fed us bullshit. They fed us bullshit. They fed us bullshit. Yeah. They being the system, they being the oppressor. Yeah. They being the there is a, you know what I mean, a a um improvement side to me, a, a radical side to me in yeah, regards well, yeah. to rights for right. my people mm -hmm. and things like that. So when I when I consciously was aware that, hey, you've been told over and over again, they told you what you know. Right. Why don't you go decide what you know by looking into what you want to look into, organizing it the way you want to organize it, mm -hmm. process it consciously the way you want. So that's what keeps me at it. Right. right. It is so that I can say I went and sought and looked up what I know, For yourself. right? I didn't just yeah. take what the public school curriculum gave me right. or what they wanted me to know about history or mm -hmm. things like that. And on my journey, I'm going to tell you, like, there are books that I have purchased just to get information that, you know, it seemed like it was purposely being kept away mm -hmm. that were like $1,000. And these are these are pieces of literature um, that are um, slave memoirs mm -hmm. and certain information that... Right. The things that are said, they don't want the general public right. to just have it access goes to against it. The narrative. Or the literature yeah. is so mm -hmm. rare that if you go on Amazon right now and look up some of these books, it's fifteen hundred dollars for the right. book. You won't find it cheaper. I right. tried. Yeah. Right. And then there is the the you know the space of me having to process the information, but then also you know, kick it back to myself to where I can give it to somebody that is not as educated that, as me. That so it's respect it. for my mm -hmm. people that, like how you said a word and then you, for those of y'all that don't know, because it's not a, I'm not trying to know all this stuff and just be uppity to my folk. Right. No, like, I want to be able to kick this to you from the site side, exactly. from the politics, what I understand about history, the revolution that we need yeah. in a way where I don't give a damn if you have dropped out at sixth grade. I'm going to yeah. explain this shit. You're going to get it, bro. Gonna if get you it. want it, if, I can give right. it to you. Yeah, it's it's a level. And and to me, that is a that is that is intelligence. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. how we have to be able to define intelligence, to take complex information, mm -hmm. right, 
and to be able to break it down to where it makes sense and it's digestible on multiple levels. Yes. You know what I mean? That's yes. what we have historically been able to do as black people, as descendants of African people, you know, on the continent. Our stories have always had three layers. Yeah. It was a layer for the babies. Yeah. It was a le it was another level for young adults and it was a another level for, for the, the elders folks. or yep. for the grown folks. Yep. And so it it was in that sense of or in that spirit of the proverbial proverb, yeah. right? Where it means something different to everybody. Yes. You That's see what I'm why saying? a lot of black churches are structured the way they are in yeah. regards to mm -hmm. you got the Sunday school for the children. The right. babies are learning about the Bible and the stories are very basic and right. they break them down to where they, they're interesting to the children. And like you say, you got, and then you got the elders that they're at certain services that a lot of the, you know, just average age adults they that, may not that be able to understand to, mm -hmm. you know 35 40 they they're not interested in congregating and talking on these on particular that level. points right you you're 100 percent correct yeah and that's how we've always structured our our teachings you know what i'm saying and and in previous conversations you talked about how movies or set up. I like. I don't watch a lot of movies, but I like to pay attention to how certain movies are, are set up mm -hmm. because you see the same patterns yeah. over and over again yeah. of the savior. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or of or sometimes the savior and the victim is one in the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you have this whole aspect you said in the previous conversation on how there comes a point where the the the, the savior is fighting for his life and yeah. he's taking an L and he may have to go and, and get bandaged up. He's yeah. on the, on the verge of death. Right. Yeah. And there's this, there's this aspect of the, the proverbial wise man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or the, the doctor or whatever yes. coming to give him the game or the yeah. wisdom that he needs yep. to go ahead and, and, and finish the job. Yeah. All of that comes out of our historical narratives. Yes. Those are those are actually that's what I refer to as African cosmology that we see taking place in movies. Yeah. That's a traditional yeah. storyline that we've always had, see, even it, before we came here. You're one hundred percent correct, but it takes somebody that's educated intellectual that or has saw it. past mm -hmm. the basic level concept of theater to explain that or film excuse They're me teaching us yes us. like if you if, if there's no one like you in the room to articulate that to the next generation right. or even just to your peers they'll miss it. it i have a book club that we re, we uh congregate at least two to four times a month and we talk about books and movies mm -hmm. right and i can meet anybody where they're at Right. Right. So we've we've went over movies like Baby Boy, but we've also went over movies like The Big Short that mm. explains the uh, housing crisis and the crash of the market. And in for me, I understand so much of this stuff on so many different levels. Like when we look at if you ever watch the movie The Big Short, right? It mm -hmm. talks about what happened with the housing market right. and the crashing, and this is when Jeezy was rapping about the recession right. and all exactly. of that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You, I take you back to two thousand and eight, right? Right. And when for those of us, when the shit crashed, right? Yeah. And 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 when prices was cheap mm -hmm. on the work and all of this. Right. But also it was a time real where estate. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I this is when I bought my first investment right. properties and I flipped them. Mm -hmm. And so for me, as I'm teaching people, it's a movie that the cast is, you know, white based. Like it's it's mostly white people. It's mm -hmm. something that the average person in our culture isn't, isn't watching. Gonna be tuned but into, when I right. make these people watch it and we go over it and I break shit down and I reference things like this is that time frame when Jeezy was saying the work was coming in for this. Yeah. This is when people was buying houses and yeah. they was getting them for the low and then it went up and they was able mm -hmm. to like all and, they, and then it put them in the mind. Oh, OK. So that's why been we hustling. need to look at right. politics. Mm -hmm. And like you say, they've been hustling. And, yeah. But it showed the the you have to be woke. You have to be looking at not just what's going on in the streets, if right. you're in the streets, but look at government, look at politics, look at the housing market. And how it look all at impacts. Economic. Yes, yeah. how everything is relative to everything in right. this damn country. Yeah, and how it impacts you where you are. Yes. Like, this ain't something that's just happening in some far off thing or just something that, you know, is benign. No, this is happening in your community. It affects your life yes. and the quality of life of you and your family. Yes. So no longer should we live in this like this this naivete yes you know what i'm saying like this is just something that's going on on social media that doesn't affect no this shit really affects yes. your yes. everyday life it does you it, know but you mean? have to have someone has to wake you up to that yeah like i even had to explain to my children hey y'all remember the house we used to live in over here i bought it during this time like i had them watch the margin call and the big right. short these Absolutely. are movies that we mm -hmm. would not just yeah. go on netflix yeah. and pick it's yeah. not but when you're looking for more than just 
a quick fix mm-hmm. on a drama film or something like right. that. You're looking or to wake your reality TV. This is, yes. Yeah. And then I, we pivot over and we watch the baby boy, right? Yeah. So on the surface level, you watch baby boy, you think it's just about Jody and Yvette. Right. But it's a lot of what's going on a in our culture. A lot of family dynamics when taking it, place. W- yeah. Yes. When mm-hmm. it got to the point where we talked about Jody's mom <laughs> in the movie, right? Yeah. And, and we talked about her taste in men by right. Pink and Melvin. Right. And then it, I, I and, was in the conflict that inevitably happens with with that picking that type of man and bringing him into your space. Right. And right. so when it got because you listen, you on point when it got to the part where I asked them to describe to me what you watched when you found out what type of man Melvin really was. Most of them didn't pay nah, attention that close. It. They didn't get it. You don't remember what what yeah. came out about Melvin. He used right. to do what to his other baby mama. See? And, and when he licked Jody across the See? head and he talked about up, Melvin was damn near a rapist and a woman a beater. Whole and a, mm-hmm. But if you if you a surface level African American person watching mm-hmm. a movie for the cultural d- d- reasons that matter, yeah. you looking at that shit like the mama was telling her son yeah. right, and you know yeah. Jody was the mm-hmm. problem in the movie and. Yeah, you ain't picking up on the subtleties. Yes, it, yeah. you, you. I asked him about Peanut. This the other baby mama that mm-hmm. he got the little girl from, and her very nonchalantness around. If I want dick, I call you right. to get. Exactly. Like that's not a good. Nah, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> that's not but it. But when when I'm when I'm letting the group just surface level talk, it didn't seem that bad. Yeah, yeah. Let me. There's there's a movie that I watched on Netflix um, a couple months ago called The Blue-Eyed Samurai. If you haven't that. watched it, you got to watch got it. I'm going to yeah. watch you, it's it. It's a series, right? Uh-huh. And I usually don't watch series because mm-hmm. I just don't have the time for it, but it came highly recommended. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give you what it's about, but knowing you, I'm a- you're going to get so much. You're going to be like DJ. I'm and you're going to talk it. about it. Finna- and, but we're going to talk about it on here too. And so family... If you haven't seen it, Blue Eyed Samurai on Netflix. Go watch it, because I'm coming back to talk about it. He yeah. already knows. Yeah. I'm on it. You're going to see, as someone who is rooted in history, yeah. so much. And, it, and the story, I can give you this. The storyline doesn't take place in America. It's in it's in uh, Japan, mm-hmm. right? Either Japan or China. Mm-hmm. But yeah, matter of fact, Japan. And it deals with the conquest of the Japanese by the Europeans, okay. but specifically the British. Okay. Oh, when I when I yeah, tell I you, when I tell I you, this whole aspect of so much of what had happened back then correlates to today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna see it because there's this aspect of of, of Chinese history called. The 100 Years of Humiliation that's dealing with the Opium Wars. Yeah. I don't know if you, you're familiar yeah. with the Okay. So that aspect of, of, of Chinese history shapes how China behaves today. Yeah. Now, China, as you know, yeah. as the audience knows, has over a billion people. Yeah. Right? And the Opium Wars has to do with the fact that Br- British... Love the tea. Yeah. But they didn't want to pay for the tea because at first China required silver. Yeah. So they were trading the, the tea for silver. The uh, the British society was going broke trying to, to buy try, tea. Trying to buy. So what did they decide to do? They decided to ship opium. Kind of sound familiar, y'all? Yeah. They shipped opium in mass to China and got the people strung out on opium. They were smoking opium. Kind of sound familiar? Yeah. I'm, I'm smiling. And it damn near destroyed their entire society. Listen, I'm smiling so hard because exactly what you're describing, my uh, 12-year-old daughter, she came home. She goes to a private school. She came home, and she educated me on that. On the opium yep, wars? That's how I you learned about saying? it. I didn't know about and it. And didn't she present it as a, as, a, as a powerful story? Yes. she And she was so serious when she was telling it, but it was empowering to me because I didn't know shit about it. You like, see? I got it from her. And and you could see the correlation yeah. of what happened to yes. us. You see what I'm saying? Yes. In terms of how it destabilized. Yes. But, but what I'm also interested in is how China recovered from that period in time, yeah. which to me... We haven't yet done because yeah. we still are reverberating from the crack era. Yeah. We, I don't care what people oh, of say. Course. The fact that we haven't even had a, a real conversation of about what the crack era or how the crack era has disrupted our relationships yeah. in terms of the black family unit. Yeah. Even though, you know, they, you still got people smoking crack, yeah. but not like it was yeah. in the 90s. Oh, of course. 
You see what of I'm course, saying? Late 80s, early think 90s. There was some intention to that. Oh, and we, uh, yeah. we say on a surface level, like, hey, and it's been in movies. Hey, don't know black people own no boats to get no coke in in here. You get what I'm saying? Like, we right. say it on, but it's very true. Very like, true. Like, there is a, a intentional, intentional. <laughs> yeah. doing behind that. It's, yeah. it's, that. For me, this is why it's so important. Because when you when you read off the definition of culture and it talks about art and film and how we Literature. talk, and how we move, mm -hmm. all of these things play a role in being well versed. And when you mention, you know, just what you described about Japan and just when you when you look at Asian culture in as as a whole or in general, mm -hmm. I started looking into them when I learned that they live the longest. They do. When I learned yeah. that they, their people. You know what I mean? So going through stuff like that, but then also being able to have rich, because that's rich parts of your culture. Absolutely. When when you guys are aging mm -hmm. and aging hell, healthy, excuse me. Yeah. You're aging well and yeah. you're aging healthy. Gracefully, yeah. Because it mm -hmm. means nothing to live to 85, 90 if years old suffer. when everything <laughs> hurts. <laughs> right. If you can't walk and you can't, yes. and you're out of your mind, you can't make sense to anybody or to yourself. Yeah, that's no quality of life. Yeah, to I, your point. I mean, um, I was on um, what is it called? 85 South Show, mm -hmm. and me and Carlos was having a conversation, and you know I'm on my normal shit, and I, I started love that. talking to I him love that conversation about his diet, powerful. and me and him were going back and forth, and you know we started talking about that, and he was just talking about how people eat what they want and live, oh, but their quality of living sucks. Yeah. I know people that are living, you know, to very, you know, old ages in regards to how long our people live, but yeah. everything hurt. Everything. If hurt. they got up out this chair right now, uh, right. It's yeah. a it's a serious noise it's, that's made. Mm -hmm. They feed, and they need. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to be that? Right. So right. if I gotta like rigorously change my diet now because food is every bit of why. Yeah, absolutely. Food and medicine, pharmaceuticals is yeah. every bit of why we oh, you, are. You 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 about to get. Yeah, we're going to save that for a whole nother conversation. But you when, know when you, I, I just, for me, it's like at some point we have to start educating ourselves. We do. And yeah. owning certain shit about us without care for who it makes feel right. uncomfortable. Yeah. We watched the movie, Um, I forget the exact name, but it's the, it's the story of Madam C.J. Walker. Okay, it's I on think Netflix. That's the name. Yeah. yeah, it might be. It or might something, be called something to, to that to effect. That, yeah. But it's the Madam C.J. Walker yeah. story. So when when we watched that movie and we went to discuss it, it was weird how most of the women did not notice that she was terrible as a wife. Right. When you look at the <laughs> movie, she gave everything to the movie. <laughs> but but okay. So when you watch the movie, her and her husband, based on you know some moves she made right. with the hair yeah. products, mm -hmm. just to you know not tell it if somebody hasn't seen it, but some moves she made, they built a company together. And right. it really was together because he was basically head of marketing. Mm -hmm. Like for her company, yeah, that, what we would consider head of marketing, mm -hmm. he drew up the ads and things like that. Right. And she, you know, some of his ads she used, some he did, but he was right there with it. The entire family yeah, the helped build time. it. Mm -hmm. But when she got in front of people, she referenced it as her company. Yeah. Her company, her company, Boxed her company. Yeah. And so fast forward to the end, when it gets to the infidelity in the marriage on his part and certain things, it was like the women first watching the movie without Love Dorsey putting her two cents. Y'all don't see how this woman pushed the relationship right. into this. Exactly. All we see is yeah. he cheated. He was wrong for that. Right. That woman. But da, 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 da. Dealt with this the whole company time. shit. Yeah, yeah. When you look like. Yeah. And, and he I, had no place. Yeah. Come on. And that's and that's big for a man. Yes. A man has to have. A man doesn't even mind helping a woman build a business. Yep. You know what I mean? Because we we will help. We will invest. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We will expend resources, energy, yep. you know, muscle, like, help, but come on, give us a space. You know what uh, I'm saying? Let, we have to, and, and, and don't come to the house bossing, like, you know what yep. I'm saying? Like, nah, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't gonna work. That ain't but gonna work. But if you, if you, if you take a woman that does not understand the value of a man and you do that shit you're doing, that's, we is. Yeah, that's as soon as the, we're going to act just happen. like Madam C.J. Walker, this yeah, is my that's company. That's what's going to happen. I, I'm a successful realtor. Yeah. I'm a, you, nigga, yeah. you, and, and well, we could separate now if you don't want, it turns into a very like yeah. independent separation. Like, and for our people, I try to counsel and empower couples that through those feelings, you aim to try to make it work and make it work by changing your mindset, yeah. not make it work through some bullshit. Right. But if you are <laughs> in your ego and in your flesh mm -hmm. off of some superficial or material shit or some, you know, out of body success you've had, that's not worth sacrifice of family. No. 
Because anytime you're dealing with family, you're dealing with legacy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're dealing with people who are going to outlive you, but still represent you. Yeah. Represent all that you did and all that you didn't do. And so we have children for the purpose of continuing our le legacy, not just in terms of DNA or biologically, but also our values, yeah. our morals. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Th those things that we want to see instilled that keeps us here on this planet. Yeah. You see, yeah. relating to the universe in a particular type of way. We want to ex to see that extended in our children and our children's yes. children. You see I, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you. Because you saying some real shit, and legacy is a strong word. It's, mm -hmm. it's powerful. It, if it goes in the category of purpose, and yes. you know, having a reason for being right with with in our culture, and you know, it may be similar or it could be the same. But I focus more on us than right. anything. It is dangerous when we're not working on anything or building anything or don't have anything to lose. Because yeah. there is no purpose, there is no care for a legacy. Because there's no thought of building a legacy. There's right. no. Um, unification of the family unit like when you don't have, you are these are dangerous individuals you're not because an what they mm -hmm. will destroy what they the, the lengths they will go through to to satisfy a an emotion mm -hmm. about something that you might have said or did it is diabolical it is yeah it, it like is it, it's the short-sightedness come on mm -hmm. not understanding or even caring how this action today will impact things for years to come this and is why, is it, and is it even worth it? Yes, but and this is why, like you know, when I when I ever I speak to, you know, men about look, Dorsey, what you feel like makes a man valuable, or women, hey, listen, look for this first in a man, or he ain't a catch. If you ain't working on something or building something, you're dangerous to me. Yeah, I always say you, you you to be at a certain age as a man and not have a program. Yeah, you you're not no man. Yes. and I ain't talking about just being employed or working yeah, for somebody. Yeah, it's not just you money. Have There's something so, going on yes. outside of that that defines you more than just that job. It's, you you see it, what I'm saying? If you're not working on something that gives you the satisfaction and fulfillment, number mm -hmm. one, but then also number two, that your woman or your family can tap into and yeah. also generate resources. Yeah, you playing yourself. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you something because I love this, right? When whenever I talk about this, I have people that bring up the fact that, well, Dorsey, there are wealthy, successful men that built stuff like entertainers. They built their brand, mm -hmm. and you know they're doing well for themselves, and they are dangerous in the realm of abuse of power, right? Right. And so then, you know, the conversation shifts in that direction. I f from. You know, what I understand about the behavior of men when they come into money and power and mm -hmm. success, I feel like we skip over being honest. And I, you and I were talking about it earlier when I gave you a scenario that I experienced in um, one of my um, clubs, clubs, so to mm -hmm. speak. But when we skip over women soliciting those men in wild ways. Yeah, they do. Wild to the point mm -hmm. where this is where they get their viewpoint that I deserve yeah, they, this much enabled. power over other people. Yeah, they're, they're enabled. They're enabled every step of the way. Yes. As the success grows, the, the, so does the enabling. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's commensurate. But we skip that and we go yeah, straight we, to, yeah, look what he all, did to yeah, all those women. Because the women now have to remove themselves from being a factor yeah. in the equation. Yeah, you this, see what I'm saying? And men oftentimes will allow women to do that too, to your point of lack of accountability. They will allow women who they know solicit these men and, and do some of the craziest things, right? But when the shit hit the fan, everybody scattered like roaches, and now it's like you don't even see the people who have enabled him every step of right. the way. That, and see, for me, I'm always about total accountability. For everybody. Right. right. And mm -hmm. so what I'm explaining is it's the same as when I explain the basic concept of the like proportioning the responsibility behind bringing a child into the world. You can give me all the money in the world right now. I can give you all the money in the world right now. If people weren't willing to succumb to the money that you're right. offering to exert your power right. over them. Yeah. Because yeah. you, when you think about it, the majority of the people that we talk about, they in entertainment. Yeah, or they're in entertainment. They own companies and things like that. Right. They're, they're not exerting like the force of the military over you to make no, you come no, you know no. be with them and sleep with them and no no like no. we're 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 willing to do whatever for a man with a bag right and so in order and to your point there has to already be a level of brokenness in us to begin with come on 
in order for that man to even exploit that. Yeah. See, or how they you, say it ain't tricking if you got it. Right. So if you have a healthy sense of self, yeah. then you're not going to allow yourself to be exploited like that. Right. You, have, you see yourself as sacred. Right. So you're not going to, regardless of what that man is on, regardless of how big his bag is, you're not going to be seduced by that right and so I, I in my mind when the conversation goes in that direction i start thinking well damn am i the only one that thinks no, like you, this you, you, like you, we literally skip this no, but part you're one of the few that's not willing to compromise right you see what i'm saying and that's the that's the season unfortunately that we're in where they don't even see it as compromising it's just doing what you do based on what you perceive as the power dynamic right. but remember what i said the ultimate expression of power is to have the ability to walk away right from the very thing the system needs you to want right Right. You see so, what I'm saying? Right. No, 100 percent. I, I 100 percent understand. I just it, it for me, it was a very relevant topic because it's like we skipped straight to that guy with all the money, did all those right. women like that. So right. none of them had the abilities to say no to the dollar he offered or whatever uh, lifestyle or flashy cars or, you know, public eye that they got right. in over that. Like, it's just him. He has this magical control over, no, when are we, and, and it goes back to what me and you discussed once before, fuck y'all for thinking that women are just that dumb right. that you exactly. can just take a dollar and, oh, here's yeah. mm -hmm. uh, $2,000 and just, and, and I'm not saying that there aren't women that are like that, right. but I'm saying, fuck you for thinking that we're going to just go along with the narrative it's, that exactly. that's the thing for and, all and women and we no just pushback. victims and yeah. you got to lock all these men up because we're being preyed upon. No, females no. is or, very or much empowering. Participants. Yeah, they're, they're active participants in the in the bullshit. And, you know, I remember um, listening to academics talk about this Diddy situation, yeah. right? And he was kind of, not kind of, he was talking about how uh, uh, men with a net worth of a billion dollars, like billionaires, yeah. they may have certain sexual proclivities yeah. that other mm -hmm. men who are not as wealthy yeah. don't have. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And while I understood what he was saying, it was almost like he was making that shit okay. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like he was justifying right. the, 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 um, the debauchery, the... the, the, the um, Whatever, whatever yeah. the other words no, are. No, I get you see exactly what, what you're saying. Yeah, based on them having money. But see, to your point, those men got that way, number one, as a result of a whole number of people saying yes and not no. Yes, so it becomes a norm. And so, but, but also what happens is because they got used to everybody saying yes, them niggas got bored. Right, they, right. The, woman, the women right. were no longer even a challenge exactly. and Come no on. longer had the ability to call their character higher. This is why I call us out every time because I don't care, you know, who you are, I've seen this go on in the streets. Like, if you from the streets, you know, right. as a, as, you ain't got to be no billionaire. No. Like, you know, no. academic going off of, you know, him reporting on the news yeah. as he mm -hmm. does. But you can you can go you to any hood in the streets. In the if yeah. a nigga the one with the work and he got the bread, he got the, the females woman. flocking mm -hmm. towards him. Yeah. And he can make your baby mama and his girlfriend be in the same room, fucking each other, doing right. it. And so, by the time he been in the streets five, six years, he done seen so much Freaky shit. It's like not a, a bad bitch don't even impress it him it or a woman. It's no like more. you you can't even the idea of sex being sacred is not a thing to it's him not, no it, more. Right. And it's like I me he being, has no reason to come to a woman come respectfully. On, come on. At and, that point. I've on, been, on any level. Right. And see, you can't if you haven't had these conversations from a mature level, like out your feelings mm -hmm. with niggas that have done this and been right. in this and women that were a part of this, you will just take the stance of, well, no, he wrong because look how he doing women. We be willing participants yeah. for just the idea to say I'm sleeping with the dude with the bag. Yeah. Sometimes we don't get none of the money. No. When you get into mm -mm. the 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 dudes, the billionaires dealing with women, I'm sure they probably breaking them off every time. But I'm I'm from the hood. Well, right. just because the streets know he got a bag, they smashing for nothing. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they smashing for nothing, and they homeboy smashing just because they affiliated yes. with the nigga with the bag. Yeah, come you on. See what I'm saying? Or or or. The you know close to the celebrity like they cool with such and such yep. so they get to smash whoever the the celebrity don't want yep. you know what I mean they get they get the hit just off of that yes off of proximity but but here's here's the other thing and to your point how women set themselves up I've been around celebrities rappers mm -hmm. and I have seen and observed how they approach women right they approach women not all but a lot 
in the most disrespectful way. Like a transaction. Right, because they've <laughs> never had to develop any other muscle. Like a transaction. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why I, I developed this notion because I've, you know, I've had conversations with celebrities and I say, I don't, I don't do celebrities. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Meaning that I don't look at celebrities as healthy people. Right. I but don't. We, we, because the nature we of how them. Right. Because the nature of, 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 of how they observe us, meaning yeah. the people, yeah. is never in our what I refer to as our natural habitat. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Yeah, we always you be in the club. club. Yep. Right. We be in the club. We having a good time, right? The minute a celebrity walks in, even if this nigga ain't had a hit in 20 years, yeah. Yeah. now the DJ playing his music. Even though the that. shit don't even jive, yeah. the vibe, yeah. what we've been on. We've been on Afro beats right. the whole time, and now right. you playing 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 some Master P. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, you right. done fucked the whole mood up. Yeah. But just he, they set the tone in. for people so, to... Right. Yeah. So now when he walk in, it's all eyes on him. Yeah. So he don't even get to see black people in our natural turn up. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he so he and I'm saying he as an example. Yeah. He gets a skewed view yeah. of us. Yeah. He gets a warped view. Yeah. So he lives life thinking that everybody caters to him. Yeah. And but that's not the reality it's, of it's, us. It's not the reality of us. I agree with that 100%. But see my my stance on it is always we allow that. We like created. they're not telling you to be groupies, run around, beg to get in a section, you know, show off, spend all your rent money because so and so. They're not telling you to do that. We're so attracted to this over empowering our own goals and dreams. Right. I mm -hmm. like when I'm, I come really from the trenches. And when I say this, what I mean is it's a mindset, it's right? It's a mindset. So yeah. I have people I care about and peers that they will spend a bag on a $2,000 outfit from head to toe to go get seen maybe for a second by a, a famous rapper in the club right. before taking them two racks and investing in right. any sort of asset or Something business that would idea. Generate a return. If, if yeah. we put mm -hmm. the $2,000 on the table and we said, listen, instead of buying the outfit, let's do this, they're going to have every question for me fear-based <laughs> on why, right. man, my money going to be... But if How we, long is going to be yep, tied up? Yep. <laughs> but if I point out, but the $2,000 you are going to spend on the outfit, I know you. You ain't going to rewear it. Now, you're going to be fresh to death. You're going to take some pictures, put it on your right. gram. But them $2,000, you ain't. Rewear it. And you won't rewear it because you done photoed yourself right. and all that. You I know you. Nah. I'm telling this person. Right. Yeah. I know. Man, but still, I'm going to be fresh to death, though. It's about the, the moment. Dorsey, you got to understand. It's about the experience, dog. Like, yeah. you, that's, that's, that's where they you, mind you, at. You can't, and, and when a person is like that, there's nothing that you can necessarily say. You can't. You see what I'm saying? That's why I always, and even in this work, and if you, I know you've gotten here. You can give us all the information in yep. the world, but you can't make us give a damn about it. Yeah, I'm a and that and that is one of the most <laughs> heartbreaking things because you want everybody to get it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, but that you, shit it hurts so bad it, when you finally come to the yes. realization and you know you be dropping it. Yes, I'm a, listen. It's funny you said it's heartbreaking because I'm gonna tell you the moment that I realized I'm in I'm in my love Dorsey element and I'm learning a lot of shit. So I was in a relationship, serious relationship, committed relationship, and I'm trying to get my partner to <laughs> succumb to, like, investing in assets. And so this right. is a street dude making plenty of money and all right. this. It got to a point where we were in the kitchen one day, and I, the refrigerator door was open. He kicked the refrigerator door closed and made a, a very serious, and he was right. So mm -hmm. it was a correct point to me. It was We were constantly going back and forth in the relationship about him taking money and wanting to fix up an old school car, right? Okay. So he had this idea of the, the color he wanted it candy painted. He wanted to put it on 30s. He uh, going yeah, to get the, the, the wheel wells cut right. so the to 30s could fit. fit. So yeah, rim of course. Don't, I'm yeah. talking about he could describe this shit yeah, to you. So, so, you know, I'm on him about not, come on now, we can do, I'm on, right? Other things. He kicked mm -hmm. the refit. And, and I'm saying this, I, ain't, I wasn't no victim. This was the realest shit said to me right. in that particular year in my life. He kicked that bitch clothes, looked me in my face and said, I've been wanting a car on rims on since 30s. I was 14. You, bitch, you not finna make me not accomplish this. I wouldn't give a fuck if I had the car for one month. 
It Bro, don't matter. I realized, like, love, you in the way, it's, dog. It's, 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 you in the way. You in the man way of, of of what he feel his purpose is. Get your ass out the way. You can't do. You That's can't when do, I realized, like, this ain't nothing. nothing. You can't I could, do nothing. And I was nothing. in the wrong. Like, yeah. I'm accountable you can't, enough. You can't Bro, deny, I was all nah. out of my element you, trying to get in the way of what the fuck somebody wants for themselves. You self. running interference. You know what I'm saying? You running interference, and that thing is so ingrained. When 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 something like that come up on you as a child, yeah. because a lot, that's where a lot of he this said, stuff comes since from. 14, you see like, what I'm saying? There is nothing. We got blinders on. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I can relate as a man. I've had those same blinders on yeah. in regards to the things that. I knew I needed to accomplish yeah. before I checked up yeah. out of this bitch. Yeah. I knew I needed it just yeah. to, like he said, yeah. it don't matter yeah. if it was for a date. Th yeah. I have to yes. experience this before I give up the ghost. It, it, you, you, what you said is so real because in that moment, it broke my heart, but it grew me up. Like, it wasn't like some sad heartbreak. Right. It was mm -hmm. like, bitch, snap out of this. Like, you can't make somebody into what the fuck you want them to be. Get right. your ass on. Like, it was, this is what the situation yeah. was saying to me. I was wrong. He wasn't wrong. Nah, in you, no way, you, shape, form, or fashion. You in the way of that. You standing all. in the way. And, and, and not only that, women have whatever version or whatever the terminology is for that. Mm -hmm. Women have the, the commensurate thing when it comes to them, yeah. too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's indicative of a woman. Yeah. I, I say all the time, if you ask a little girl by the time she's six, six or seven years old, right. she can describe to you her wedding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Now, she don't know nothing about being a wife, well, yeah, but she but can she tell, tell you yep. what color her dress going to yep. be, how many bridesmaids, yep. whether she getting that married at a church, church or outside. outside. Yep. You Come see on. what I'm saying? She, she can, now, now, you got to ask, where does a little girl get that from yeah. at yeah. that age? Yeah. And so that becomes everything in, in, yep. in, in woe to the man who comes and say, well, baby, yeah. I can't fulfill oh, that. Yeah. It, it, she's looking at him yeah. as less than a man yeah. because I've had this narrative in my mind yeah. all my life. Yeah. And, and, and for some women, <laughs> to your point, it's, once it's so they get real. a bag, it, any nigga yeah. will do. Just help me yeah. fulfill this. Yeah. I, and I, we see that play yes, out. I, they but, will pick anybody yeah. to, to, to check the, that off. Yep. The way it's, it's crazy because, you know, we say watch out for men and how they change when they get money. If y'all ain't paying attention, we we will change. Yeah. When you get Absol a female, mm -hmm. and even nowadays, the the concept of you know uh, you know upgrading your vanity, going down to Miami, getting your body done, right. getting that extra weight or stretch marks off of you, <laughs> all of that stuff is it's it's very empowering to the self esteem. Right. It's yeah. necessary for a lot of women. Like it is something I am in support of. Right. Right. But when they come back. And you ain't improved nothing up here. What's the Because you can get the yeah. veneers, you can get the booty done, get your waist look, right. get your lips done, and put the that. little fillers in, right. and all that shit, get your, clear your skin up, like get money. the chem. Yeah. You, you look, you look good. like money. And it, yeah. will, it will fuck you up, right? When you come back with just those, you know, superficial things, mm -hmm. vanity, and then you get treated the same as the you same did way. with the bad body and the broken teeth and all of that. <laughs> Like, because you can't attract better because right. your inner is still the same still and break yeah. us the fuck now. Yeah. But then there are those of us that we go do that and we come back and the, the man can't even recognize us. And yeah. I ain't talking about the looks. Bitch, yeah. come back and not oh, she. she I can oh, get yeah. another nigga in yeah. it. That he, they become disposable. When before she had all that done, she was she was willing to do everything to hold the relationship together. Now, it's like. She started going to them boss brunches, you, you, the you women see what I'm brunches, the and seminars shit. and all that. Of yes, course, it's over. She started, you know, seeing a different caliber of dude. Yes. you know what I mean. And so, you know, we we're living in an age now to where you can actually see people who have invested in themselves. Yes, and 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 for the most part, for me. I think it looks good it to does. a certain extent. I love it. You, because you, it's a you, form of yes, self-love. You yes, see what I'm saying? Yes. Especially, like you said, if, you, if you've if you had fucked up teeth and now all of a sudden you got the money to get you a new set of Why veneers. Would you, not? you see what I'm saying? To, Why would to, you not? To, to make you feel better about it's yourself. Yourself, yes. To I allow that smile yes. when you was like laughing with the, yep. you know and, what and I'm saying? So put self your hand up there. and yep. all of that. Yeah, free yourself up of, yes. that, of that by getting your teeth done. Yes. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But don't take yourself overboard. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Where you begin to now look like an object. Yeah. And I call it going from spirit to caricature. Yeah. Because sometimes women, they get these body augmentations and yeah. it's like, 
sis, you reduce yourself to a caricature yeah. at this point, yeah. to, to something to be made mockery of. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Because, but I, go ahead. I'm, I'm a, cause I love what you're saying, right? And it's very mature the way you're articulating it. Um, when, when, when you see women, you know, change themselves, and even men do stuff, stuff to themselves, I'm okay if how you chose to go make yourself look isn't attractive to me. Like, me or you right. could look at mm -hmm. it and say, it she, she, yeah, right. that she messed herself up. She went too far, right? I'm fine with that. What I have a problem with is when you only fix the vanity and, and then and you become an object because there's nothing else, else of value in or on no you. No balance. So you have to yeah. lead with, look at this ass, look at this, yeah. look at that, pictures with, look at my lips, look at this. And so, you know, there will always be some of us that we don't agree with how far you went. Right. But right. it would be a little bit more attractive, uh, not that yeah. you should care, right. if you actually had more to present yourself yeah. off of some, some substance, substance yeah, other than you. just that. And to the to the, your point on making yourself an object, it makes it awful. When I see women that you're beautiful and I love that, you know, we understand that femininity and looking pretty and things like that is something that is at the forefront of who you are, right. but it can't be all oh, you are yeah. to the point where y'all go places and it's like, look at my booty. You don't like me. Like, that's right. all you that's got. What, that's what you lead with. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the men treat you accordingly, yeah. now you're beat up and broken and you're going home to children right. and putting that attitude or that, that energy onto them. It's like this affects our community. Yeah, it you ain't does. got to be one of them dudes that's with one of them type of females right. or even willing to smash them. It's gonna still affect. It, it reverberates. Yeah, it goes beyond their house and because it affects the entire community. And I and I agree with that. And obviously, for those of us who know you, we know that you are an advocate of us being whole and healthy. Yes, you know what I mean. So anything that moves us. Away from that, yeah. we can't be with that. Yes. You know what I mean? Anything that does not empower us to be the highest version of ourselves, we can't get with it. Right. And so, I'm but and you like you're raising sons, I'm raising daughters. I, part of it is me knowing my child has to get out in their peer category and date and maneuver and navigate through life this, yeah. with mm -hmm. y'all nutcases that y'all creating with these fucked up ass ways. Right. Your sons have to navigate with and these kind of women because by the yeah. time they get older, I'm pretty sure the age is going to be younger and younger of these women being able Getting to have things access done. to right. things mm -hmm. like that. So now you have to teach your boys some things that you probably didn't even have to know, which yeah. is how to navigate rather around rather a woman actually has more substance than just her looks or right. more going on than just fixing her body. Or oh, hopefully it is a woman because the way this shit going now, some of these Come things, on. you know what I'm saying, is masked yes. to hide a whole lot of other stuff. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're going to have to have that conversation yeah, I'm, too you next know, time I'm you come. I'm willing to have it. I'm yeah, willing to have it because, deal, again, yeah. when we talk about your children, my children, the youth in that's, general, that's where I'm having real. to have uncomfortable mm -hmm. conversations. Like I did a, a video one time, and this was just, you know, me sharing with my platform the experience. I was in a beauty supply store, mm -hmm. and I had two of my daughters with me, and there was a, a, um, a gay guy in the store, and he had on a skirt. And mm -hmm. you could see his genitals. Oh, damn. So you could see his balls at the bottom <laughs> of the skirt. So the skirt was short. <laughs> yes. And so he was a supporter of my platform. Okay. But I was with my children. Right. So it was a, Dorsey, like, a trying to interact. <laughs> Bruh, I can't, dog. Your balls hanging out, bro. <laughs> and and bro, emphasis on bro. If but I, I'm in my mind, I'm right. processing it like this because you got your children with my, you. My children are vocal. They've been reading since they was two years old. Yeah, like yeah. reading books. They know what it since is since they was yeah. two. Mm -hmm. Now I got to explain. Yeah, this right here. Why he have on a skirt. Or right. she, with, whatever with his testicles. pronouns yeah. are, yeah. and we can see the ball. Because that ain't appropriate. I don't give a damn what right. you identify exactly. as. It's not appropriate in a space where... A public space. Come yeah. on, now. Yeah. So it, it, these, are, it, these conversations are necessary because I need my children to understand what's going on. Yeah. Rather, I'm in support of it or not, or if you were in support of it or he is right. or not, they still need to be able to process what's happening because exactly. it's happening. And, and decide whether or not they're okay with it or not. Right. And it so the standards still have yes. to be set. Right. And so to your point, the conversation needs to take place. I'm looking forward to having that conversation. Yeah.
Because and it, and it does. It's not about what you agree with or what I agree right. with. You raising kids and they coming up in a time Absolutely. where it's going on. So you can't yeah, not you talk can't, about it. Yeah, exactly. And you, you can't, can't just you can't say, away no, I don't want you involved in that. It doesn't work like no, that. No, it don't work like that. Because it's showing up in schools. Yeah, it's showing up. We were just up. in the mm -hmm. beauty supply store. It's and it's in, in the, random places. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and there are the idea is. A person's sexual identity or their gender or whatever they believe about who they are still does not take them out of the conversation of trying to choose good people around you. Right. Absolutely. No, because I, I agree Because regardless of your sexual preference or your gender, I know some fucked up people in all areas. In I all need my areas. kids yeah. to be able to pick good people. To differentiate. Give a damn period. what you identify yeah. as. Period. Are you a good person? Right. Or are you going to snake my child? Right. Are you going to snake me? Are yeah. you? Do you have ill motives or ill mm -hmm. intents for our people? I... I feel like we have bigger things to focus on than the surface level talk behind sexual preferences and genders that other communities can have. Yeah, they can afford that. Yeah, they we can't. We're still systemically behind economically. Because there's a to your point, there's a higher level of conversation that requires us even in that to approach it in a different type of way. Yeah. The 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 reason why that conversation or those types of conversations to me becomes so uh toxic is to all in how we approach it yeah you know what i mean if you have a clear view as to what is healthy and whole mm -hmm. and you operate from that perspective yep. we can have the conversation yeah. based on left and right yeah, lateral and nothing limits. you have going on you, will you, offend you yeah, or make me uncomfortable we can we can have that conversation but if we approach it from just to your point pure feelings and yeah. emotions yeah. then that's not a firm foundation for yeah. us to have that's why i don't do debates because i don't really see people it gets out emotional here. yeah but, but some it I, gets for emotional. me yeah. my my main thing is i stick to you know repetition of a lot of the same or or you know the the excuse me i stick to the repetition of certain pieces of information intentionally because we will get distracted by what it other becomes, groups yeah, can exactly. afford to talk about right. mm -hmm. so other cultures that they they are not in the bottom percent of math and reading right. with their children they can afford they can to afford sit up and have debates, even right. even if yeah. they don't come up with no resolve for what shit, they debate. They, they can yeah. they already got certain shit. Yeah. They winning in. Yeah. We down in too many areas, bro. Yeah. To to be sitting up here going back and forth about to be certain stuck shit. on that right we, there. We don't we don't to the, to the exclusion of everything else that's that we know is destroying us. I agree. Yep, I agree. I've even said when we start talking about. Even because people have asked me, come and talk about cosmetic surgery or come and talk about sex change, gender change, surgeries and stuff. We don't even have money for this type of shit right. by the masses in our community. Yeah, I don't. We could discuss it. I'm very intellectual. I can have yeah. that. Mm -hmm. My people that don't got money. What <laughs> for me? We don't even have money. If you could prove to me that it will move the needle. Right. We don't have funds to like yeah. get past our basic needs, right. let alone just. So while we're while we're skipping over all of these fifty other things that are higher priority that definitely has has an effect on our quality of life, to focus all of our time and attention on this right here. My my you you listen, cause you preaching. My people are taking bill money and scam money from the PPP and EDD era and getting their bodies done. We don't have in the income mode. to be yeah, doing we're, that. Yeah, we're in Maybe a group mode. of yeah. well-established, coming from generational wealth, white women can sit on a platform and it would suit them right. to extensively talk about cosmetic right. surgery. Yeah, my nigga, they have that kind of leisure time. That's we, what we, I'm. It's, we, it, we don't it's have not it. bad. It's nothing nah. to say anything bad about them discussing that. Nah, that's, we that's, look crazy. Yeah. Our children. It, I, I went through on one of my lives and talked about the percentage in every state, damn there, of um, black children that are struggling in reading and math. I remember it's I saw that. 80 to all, like 90% in every state. All the while, black America is talking about the Diddy situation. Or or fucking yeah. cosmetic surgery. Yeah. Or who mm. booty? Uh, BBL is, is right. fucked up. I wouldn't give a damn if the lady BBL fucked up. The babies can't read. We need <laughs> right. to be talking about that. They can't right. do math. Right. These are the key areas to do well in this in country. Mm. In business with life and money. And things like that that we need to do well in. We can't afford it. Yeah. Somebody was like, well, talk about sex. To, I Listen. I don't give a damn if your son or daughter or my son or daughter wanted to change. They, I, I would tell them the same thing I'm telling you. We cannot afford that.
Right. So that can be a goal of yours when you get older. <laughs> right. right now, we can't afford. We need generational wealth. We, we need, need assets. We need, we we need, need property. Food, we need food yeah. in the refrigerator. We need food in the refrigerator. But giving <laughs> my kids a look at our family, I didn't. I didn't come from wealth. Right. It's it's properties in our family we fighting over. Mm -hmm. I'm watching the older people Sur like survival you signed my mm -hmm. name on that deed and you went post too because auntie left me that house. Right. Hey, I can't get your we, penis cut off and switch to a vagina. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have the money we, for that. We, we can't deal with that. Now. Trying to buy yeah. a house. God right. damn it. I'm yeah. trying to set you up yeah. to go to college. Right. I'm trying to Come on now. Got, got like other, at some point, got other truth, priorities. Yes. We got to start keeping it real like that. Matter of fact, you can't even afford to be no transgender. Shit. That's what I'm trying to say. When you, when, If you really understand, because this is the stance I take on these conversations. Right. You have to pay for the hormonal yeah. medication to keep yeah. going. That's, I ain't got no money for that. Right. If your ass got sick right now, I barely got the money for that. Right. And you took my some optional shit. We gonna have to cremate your ass if you die. This, yeah. come on, we got the fish fry and yeah. all that. We behind, yeah. sir. We behind. So I understand yeah. you want to change your gender, but you are gonna have to hold on until we get <laughs> life have insurance. To, you have to stay Fix our credit. <laughs> own some properties. Put some money in the bank. Stay in family units. So we we gotta tackle this first, my G. Oh. Then we'll circle back around to whether you are gonna keep your genitals you or not. You have to suffer with being a boy too. <laughs> so we get there. And this this what I'm telling my people straight up. Uh. You can be offended by it or not. I don't give a damn. I our people, I can't speak for white, right. Asian, whatever other, for black folk, bro, we don't have it for that right now. Right. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I, I can't take not notes, keep family. it real. We relax and take notes, family. <laughs> DJ Jordan, love Dorsey. We're going to do it again real soon, y'all. We love y'all. Yes. <laughs>